Hi, my name is Mona Hayward. I love the title of Max Licato's book, God's Story, Your Story. We all have a story, and I'm going to try to attempt to share my story with you. Like many of you my age, I grew up attending church. I knew God was the creator of the universe and everything in it. I knew that his son Jesus was born of a virgin. I knew that Jesus died on the cross and rose again on the third day. And I knew in my head that I believed all these facts and that if I went to church and was a good person, that I would be heaven bound when I died. In my late teens, I stopped going to church. I was what they would say a CNE Christian, a Christmas and Easter Christian. But do you ever have that feeling that there must be more to life than just going through the motions? A few years later, I heard the saying, going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to a garage makes you an automobile. Or going to church doesn't make you a Christian any more than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. Well, in my case, a cheeseburger. Anyway, although these sayings are quirky, they kind of hit me. They spoke to me. There must be more to life than just going to church and being a good person. One day in my early 20s, I was walking by Calvary Temple during a noon hour break from work. I stopped at the steps of the church. I looked up and I said to myself, I wonder what it would be like to go in there. Now, why I remember that all these years later, when I can't remember what I had for lunch yesterday, I don't know. Maybe God was giving me a gentle nudge towards the truth. Ecclesiastics 3.11, Yet God has made everything beautiful for its own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. He has planted eternity in our hearts. March 1988, I had a miscarriage. Glenn and I were devastated. But a few months later, I found out we were expecting again. I started to go back to church. I thought if God sees I'm going back to church and I start getting check marks by my name for attending, surely he would bless us with a healthy baby, and he did. Natalie was born in April. Life was good, but then it got busy and I stopped going to church again. Two years later, Jessica was born, another blessing. In 1993, we started to build a house. During the construction period, we stayed and lived with Jack and Joan Hayward, my in-laws. I didn't know that this move was going to be a huge part of my story. They, along with many people, were praying for the salvation of my household. While living there, Joan asked if I wanted to attend church with them. Well, for some reason, I didn't hesitate. I said yes. And then when I entered the doors of Grand Bay Baptist Church, I immediately felt welcomed. We started to attend, attend regularly, but not with many ups and downs. Most Sundays, it was a battle to get the girls ready to go to church, like most parents. There was um, not, they weren't at least a bit interested in going down to junior church. They just wanted to stay close by to me. And at one point I had pneumonia. There were Sundays I got up and couldn't find a thing to wear. On the way to church, my pantyhose would run. There was just one thing after another, after another, after another. But I continued to go and Jesus blessed my perseverance. But now and then a thought would enter in my head. This is not the denomination you grew up in. What do you think you're doing? But there was a stronger pull for me to continue going. The early church teachings I received growing up started to trickle from head knowledge down into my heart. My heart was overflowing with an amazing peace, excitement, and purpose when I began to dig deeper into Jesus. Finally, the magnetic force, or should I say the Holy Spirit, was so strong, I could not live another day without accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And that was in 1994. My life is good, but it also isn't perfect. Actually, there's times it was, it's so far from being perfect that I can hardly function. There's sleepless nights and stressful days, but I never waver from Jesus' promise that he will never leave me or forsake me. And in John 16:33, Jesus tells us, here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. When we invite Jesus into our lives, he is with us in our story. A beautiful, 
life-changing, life-fulfilling story. What amazes me most and still overwhelms me today is his unexplainable, unconditional love for someone like me. That my past sins do not define me. Jesus defines who I am. Here I was, wishy-washy with my faith for years, asking for forgiveness and repeating the same sin over and over again, saying I will surrender all to take some of the baggage back. Jesus' unconditional love, his patient his grace and his mercy are beyond my understanding, but I know he is faithful when I confess I am not, I am not sometimes. I am not naive to the enemy's attack on my weak spots. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, I am getting better at discerning the enemy's ways and recognizing his tactics. In Hebrews, it says, For our high priest is able to understand our weaknesses. He was tempted in every way that we are, but he did not sin. Let us then feel very sure that we can come before God's throne where there is grace. There we can receive mercy and grace to help us when we need it. I know I'm a work in progress. I know that life isn't perfect, but I do know from the bottom of my heart that Jesus has a plan and a purpose for me until he calls me home. I'm going back to Max Licato's book I mentioned earlier, and he writes, Your story indwells God's. Above and around us, God directs a grander saga, written by his hand, orchestrated by his will, unveiled according to his calendar. And you and I are a part of that. Your life emerges from the greatest mind, the kindest heart in the history of the universe, the mind and heart of God. God bless you on your life's journey. God's story, your story. Thank you for listening. God bless you.